Hi everyone, it's Dennis at TurfGrassScience.com and we're out for a nice uh, May evening walk with Dandelion. Here's the Dandy. He's always happy to see people. We're going to do a disease patrol to show everybody how bad take all root rot is and tar and crown rot blight have taken over north areas of the metroplex so these are pretty healthy hybrid bermuda yards get good sunlight trees are small right now here's a hybrid bermuda yard under about a 20 foot tall tree that you can see it's thin bermuda that's been thin for a long time and bare, and just weeds. Oh. Now we're approaching the first St. Augustine lawn with some disease. You can see the dead runners on the top. And brown doesn't mean tar or fungus oh. or blight, but the rot in a specific way leads me to believe that it's certainly crown rot and whether it's tar or not has to be determined by a lab test. And then you can see that there's patches of it here that are still alive. And then up to the trunk of the tree where it's worse, where the rot starts the worst because there's at least some light. Here's a terrible infection of tar. This, this lawn's been resodded four times that I know of before the current owners have moved in. And they just keep, as you can see, stacking stod here against the curb. Completely decimated. It's been here for, tar's been in this lawn for probably 10 years. Here you can see a moderate infection or just hasn't greened up this summer like it should have already because it's choking to fight off the disease. And part of part of the lawn's healthy, part of it isn't, and that's that's common. Front yard to backyard, here in the neighbor's yard then. The infection gets worse. They've resodded here a couple of times and last fall. Normally it takes a year or so for tar to kill St. Augustine, but in this instance it's in this instance it's killed it even faster. And then here you can see they've resodded on this corner about five times. Here again, next door neighbor, there's a patch that's okay. And then you've got going into the neighbor's lawn, the infection, I'd call that a moderate infection. And that's just five minutes of out here walking around. Haven't even gone three blocks. Here's another one on the third block that's yellowing and struggling. Yeah, and yellowing and brown isn't all isn't just dependent on going to be automatically tar. The average uh, the average lawn that I pull soil test samples for and then disease stolen samples and send off to the lab has between two and four different kinds of diseases from blight to tar. Later in the year, it'll be brown patch, crown rot, and then severe soil deficiencies. This was resodded last October. It's already yellowing and dying. They, they had a pretty moderate infection and they didn't even strip anything out, which wouldn't have mattered. They just threw this down on top of the ground. And this is kind of the end of the third block.
I'd say it's a moderate to severe infection of whatever funguses it has. And here they thought they were helping and followed the homeopathic ideas online and spread some peat moss out, which is, you know, helps a tiny bit, but kind of like if you have cancer, you're not going to get homeopathic treatments. And tar is a cancer level disease for turf grass. It's not like brown patch or blight or something. So that concludes a couple block walk. And in closing, turf grass, similar to, to people, um, is more susceptible to diseases once it's unhealthy. You know, it, everyone probably knows somebody that has caught a major disease, cancer level or something else. And then it's the secondary illness that ends up getting them. And so, regardless of what kind of diseases your lawn might have, that's first set off by soil deficiencies, similar to Home Depot putting out Home Depot fertilizer for 10 years that doesn't have any phosphorus in it, and they call it Texas Blend, which is a marketing scam. There's no such thing. There's 250 different soil profiles in Texas, so there's no blend for all of DFW, let alone for all of Texas. But once the nutrients start to get completely off and deficient, especially a major nutrient, and then we have a big stressor, like for example, the near record heat last summer and a one year drought, that combined with soil deficiency problems and then tar and disease already being in the soil for maybe moderately healthy, and Dandy's going crazy right now. <laughs> Um, but for whatever diseases might have already been in the soil, then that stressor last fall and the winter just set it off. And that's why so many St. Augustine lawns this spring um, just showed up on death's doorstep. So please call a, whether you call us or call a certified turf grass professional, don't ask your, or your landscape guy and don't go to Home Depot and get some fungicide and throw it out with some peat moss. Um, <laughs> you're not going to fix the problem long term. Um, if you have regular fungus, you're probably not going to fix it. If you have tar, it's absolutely not going to fix it. And the best you can do is put it in remission with the proper cocktails, depending on what you have, mixed and rotated, and then you've got to stay on it. Um, it'll take four, four treatments plus whatever shade, drainage, or soil deficiencies you have and then every year after it's going to take a few treatments to keep it in in um, remission so hope that helps give us a call or again contact somebody with a degree and a certified turf grass professional called ctp um, if you suspect that you've got disease or tar in your lawn thank you weeds and disease for your lawn.